Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Comment of the Day for January 9, 2020. Today's honorable mentions come to us from Haddam Ten Rose, Vic Viper, and MBK Silent. The bronze medal today comes to us from Obi Han Kenobi. I know some crazy fans of Kylo Ren and Rey. Spoilers! When Kyle died at the end, started making death threats to J.J. Abrams and other studio employees. I hate to put the tinfoil hat on, but the original fans were the ones labeled as the toxic phantom and problematic for harassing Rose Tico, no evidence, off of social media. With the way the new fans are acting, maybe it's just hide the narrative um, or Disney in general doesn't want idiots fighting over Star Wars anymore. I don't feel like Disney cares about the co- about Kappa if they haven't done their main channel yet. I always thought the point of Kappa was to combat channels where weirdos attract kids with toys and candy or do gross shit. I could be wrong, but I feel like the fandom is why this happened. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking more of that. Do you say that it wasn't uh, the comments weren't disabled on Disney's main channel? Well, that's a red. That's a dead giveaway. That's a red flag. If it's just a Star Wars channel, then they just don't want anyone leaving comments about Star Wars. And I don't mean like comments saying Star Wars sucks anymore. I'm talking about the J.J. Abrams death threats and all that kind of stuff. And that. Uh, and you talk about toxic man. Those fans of Kylo and Ray. Raylo, Raylo fans, I think they're called. Man, that's a rabbit hole that you do not want to go down. As far as the harassing of Rose Tico, you said there's no evidence of that. Weird thing about Rose is she was barely, I, I heard she was barely even in this new movie. So it's like they tried to rectify a lot of stuff from the last movie. And I saw the last movie. Rose was very, just her character was really annoying. Not one of the worst things about the movie, actually. I didn't mind Rose a whole lot. I mean, it wasn't like she was Jar Jar. You know, Misa Rose! She wasn't that bad. Uh, So, I mean, Jar Jar is still probably the most annoying character, I would say, in all of Star Wars, I would say. But, uh, yeah. Leave that in the comment section down below. What do you think is either the worst character in the Star Wars franchise or the most annoying character? Thank you, Obi-Wan Hanobi. The silver medal comes to us today from Ornery Cuss. Hello, Rick. Hello, Ornery. I stumbled on your channel about a week ago, and I haven't watched much else on YouTube since then. Sounds like you're addicted to Rick, huh? I was so relieved to see someone committed to calling out the e-beggars the way that you do. You got an instant sub from me, and I've learned so much. Thank you for exposing the Metal Jesus Begs crew to me. Uh, You renamed them MJB. I never subscribed to any of their channels, but I used to watch MJB in the past. I eventually came to the conclusion that his channel was simply a means to which to feed his addiction of collecting more and more games. I noticed that the only thing he knows about the games he shows in his videos is whether or not he <laughs> whether or not he owns them. He seems to mention it more when he is looking to add something to his collection every single time his guests show a game that he doesn't own. Well, I did that wrong. If he said it would be looking to add to my collection. There you go. I edited that. Someone on another channel mentioned that the aspiring museum curator, Scamcock, has an insatiable addiction to tacos No, for collecting games, and I think the same can be said for Metal Jesus Begs. These folks are a product of the narcissism that comes with social media attention, and they believe they are the gatekeepers to the YouTube game collecting scene. They are wanton elitist and seem to be very short-sighted, seem to be very short-sighted when it comes to the livelihood of their own fans. One person I had been following for a few years, never subbed, is Pathanes Punk. I have also been disappointed with his antics and self-righteousness to the point that I have decided to stop following him as well. One thing I can say about Pat is that he produced his NES and SNES guidebooks, which I regrettably purchased, so he actually offered me a tangible product that serves as a, as a bit of purpose. These other clowns want me to send them free games and pay them money to answer questions. 
which I'm too intelligent to fall victim to. Well, good for you. One last thing I'd like to mention about the Z-Beggars and full-time YouTubers' sustainability and longevity is this. I wonder if they plan on receiving Social Security benefits and when they retire. Odds are they are paying little to nothing to the fund, so more than likely won't be eligible to collect more than a couple hundred dollars a week. That's a meaty comment there. Um, where do I begin and where do I end? I, well, welcome to the channel first off. You know, always cool to... You know, get somebody new to the channel. You're going through a lot of the backlog, um, other things. Sometimes somebody stops on a channel and then I'll see them going through a lot of different other uploads. And I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool indeed. I think Haddington Rose was one one of those. I remember the first couple nights Haddington Rose was here, you know. I'd be like, boom, boom, another comment, another comment. I'm like, yeah, that's, it's a nice feeling. It's a good feeling there. Now, feeding an addiction of collecting more and more. You talk about... Uh, the thing I laughed about was you and and it's a little more okay he he knows a little more about the games and just not knowing that he owns them but when you watch something and you see him pause for a second and maybe there's someone else that's a guest you know and he refers to them about it you know you could tell that he probably doesn't play the games a whole lot that's just you know and I can't really prove that I just throw that out there but it just seems like to me he he's big into the collecting and not really the playing as much. All right. But I could be wrong. Hey, I could be wrong. Uh, you just notice if you go to his channel, you don't really see him. I don't know. Has there been ever been a video where he's actually playing a game with somebody? I don't know. It's just weird. There's nothing wrong with that. But if people get the idea that he's a heavy game player, I don't know. It just seems he's more like into the collecting aspect, which I said, nothing's wrong with it. But out of all the gaming YouTubers, it's so weird that so many people might stop by and ask him a lot of questions about games, detailed questions, and he's just really probably not going to be very qualified to answer a lot of those questions. But as far as collecting, hey, he'll, he'll give you some collecting tips. One tip is make sure you get as much as you can from your own audience. Those suckers, you know? Uh, but yeah, the... NES NES guidebooks, I don't know how much they are. You said you regrettably bought them. Maybe they're overpriced for what they are, but hey, you know what? I am all for, all right? You know how I feel about Pat the Nest Bunk, but I'm all for the selling of things you created. An actual, tangible product you can hold in your hand and you can read. A book at that. You know? I mean, they might be overpriced. I'm not sure. But still, I mean, that's, could you imagine Metal Jesus coming out with a book? <laughs> I, I don't know. A book of collecting. Maybe he could do a book of collecting, but it would be probably co-written by someone else. Maybe he'd have someone else that knows things about video games, a lot of things, a deep history, write it. Who would be the ghostwriter? Hmm. I don't know. Leave it in the comment section down below. If Metal Jesus came out with a book kind of like Pat the Nest Punks, who would write it? And the gold medal comment today comes to us from... What the hell is this? This can't be right. This this was the same person that left the last gold medal comment. It's a back-to-back, -back, bitches! Rusty Shackelford. I hardly find any good with YouTube complying to COPPA. Sure, this might encourage current and future YouTube personalities... To reconsider making YouTube a full-time job, however, there are other platforms such as Twitch where these YouTube personalities can run to and claim full-time jobs there. Plus, I can imagine that the e-beggars will now be in full force trying to push their Patreons even more to compensate the losses they may face in ad revenue if they are hit with COPPA violation. Sure, this may minimize, keywords may minimize, potential predators luring children but this doesn't really stop the issue. Predators are still going to find ways to get to children regardless, regard because let's face it, YouTube isn't the only site children spend their time on. Plus, COPPA guidelines are pretty complex. I mean, here are the guidelines. Subject matter of the video, blah, 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 whether children are in your intended. I'm not going to go over the guidelines, Rusty. All right, we're going to just, we're going to skip over that, you know. I mean, it's part of the comment there. I mean, but I'm just going to skip over it. Whether the, I hate, I hate doing that, man, but I'm going to do it to you. All right. 
Deal with it, Rusty. Deal with it. You got the gold. Deal with it. All right. Sure. Google claims that just because you meet certain guidelines does not automatically mean your content is directed towards, but the guidelines are borderline broad slash specific enough to put many channels under COPPA radar. The Star Wars channel, yes, it's the Star Wars channel, not Disney. Removing comments is proof of that. Star Wars is rated PG-13 for fuck's sakes, which is meant for mature audiences over the age of 13, yet they still got coppered. So it's only a matter of time before other Star Wars fan channels and others get the boot. Honestly, I can see this really hurting YouTube channels that devote themselves to franchise slash series such as Pokemon, Animal Crossing, etc., which is really going to disconnect people from these communities since they will no longer be able to comment on videos, so it really sucks for them. I think that's what is really, what's really important here. The communities, especially the small ones. They may likely suffer the most from COPPA after working hard to build or find one that is suitable, and it really does suck for them. But we will see what happens next. I doubt any good will come from COPPA, and I can imagine the good channels that are out there will suffer the most from all this. Here we've talked about a possibility, how you have some some gaming YouTubers that uh, seem to cater and market themselves to children a lot. Maybe some this year have turned around. Maybe you might have some that did earlier before that wouldn't think twice about putting a lot of Pokemon characters in their thumbnail with the big bright eyes. Usually they make the eyes real big and everything, the thumbnails and, uh, you know, big mouth wide open, all excited and, you know, you know, acting like a kid on the thumbnail. Now it's weird. I wonder if you'll see a lot of these same channels, maybe now with a, with a, with a different character they create. Maybe they'll have to, because, you know, you got to click that thing on your channel. Do you direct your content towards children or do you not? I mean, here it was easy for me because I don't. I don't, Rusty. I mean, there wasn't any fear there, but I think to myself, I wonder, what if, let's say I had like a comment of the day. I don't know. Let's say I had a comment of the day and replying to one of the comments was about toys. Like, I don't know. I mean, uh, I think I'm covered. I think I'm clear in the clear, though. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of people that collect toys that are adults. I don't I really don't know how it works. I looked at the guidelines. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm clicking that I'm not, but uh, it's so weird. I mean, it's this it's weird to say what like who makes the determination? Like who makes that determination? What is directed towards kids? What about Ryan, Ryan's world, which is the biggest channel bigger than PewDiePie? One question is, is that channel still making money? Are there ads on that channel? <laughs> if I were a smaller channel, I would point to that and say, well, shit, nothing's happened to that channel. And that channel is directly directed towards kids. I mean, what if, if your channel is really huge and making YouTube a lot of money, are you exempt from that? I would say if the, if the cop of people come down to YouTube and they target one channel to make an example of, it's going to be Ryan's world. It's going to be Ryan's world. And, you know, maybe Ryan's world, maybe they have to, might have to pay the fines. But from the way things are looking, like I said, they, they're a bigger channel than PewDiePie. So uh, the good news is, even if they are targeted by the Coppa people, they can afford to pay. All right. They can afford to pay. But, yeah, about Coppa, uh, it's, I don't know. Like, what have you all noticed? Have you all noticed anything Coppa related to point to maybe any possibility that they might actually try to go after any channels or in a grand scheme of things are a lot of people just worrying about essentially nothing I don't know we will see going into this year we will see thank you Rusty thank you Obi Han Kenobi is that what your name was and thank you Henri Cuss have a great night